Hello and welcome to Virtual Sunday School! Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button! Today we're going to look at a hero of the faith and a personal hero of mine. Like a big hero. I love her. Elizabeth Elliot. With Forefront, we even did a show about her because she's so great. I wanna be, be there in that number when the saints go. I wrote it. <laughs> so we'll look at Elizabeth Elliot's story, a craft, a prayer, and then we'll finish with a final thought. So grab your drink and a biscuit and let's do this. When you're stuck at home with time to spare, can't go outside, you're not going anywhere Why don't you pull up a chair or pull up a suit Tune into Virtual Sunday School With the craft to do and a story or two Say hello to Nat, she's stuck at home too Why not tune in to Virtual Sunday School? Elizabeth Elliot is one of my all-time heroes, so I'm really excited to share a little bit of her story with you guys today. We're even going to look at some of the real-life photos and videos from the time. Elizabeth Elliot was an American missionary back in the 1950s. A missionary is someone who's decided to make it their full-time job to tell other people about Jesus, whether in their own country or abroad. Elizabeth and her husband Jim Elliot, along with four other missionary couples, lived in a country in South America called Ecuador. Now they felt that God wasn't just calling them to tell normal people in the street about Jesus, but also to reach out and talk to a tribe who lived in the middle of the jungle. Now this was something that had never really been done before because they were a very dangerous tribe. Ooh, gotta watch for those spears. One of the men, Nate, was a pilot, so he could fly them into the jungle near where the tribe lived. It was decided that Jim and the four other husbands would go and try to make first contact while the wives stayed at home. So Nate flew them into the jungle and they met the tribe! And not only did they not throw spears at them, they managed to make a friendly first contact. Even though they didn't speak the same language, it seemed to have gone very well. However, just a few days later, some of the other members of the tribe came out of the jungle and the spears came out too. And they speared the five missionary men to death. Jim and Nate and the other men didn't put up a fight. That's not what they were there for. Sadly, they were killed by the tribesmen for simply trying to be friendly and tell them about Jesus. And they didn't even fight back. Remember that part because it's important later. Of course, this was devastating for the wives, most of whom were left with young children. But the story doesn't end there. You see, Elizabeth and some of the other wives of the missionaries not only forgave the tribe, but they stayed in the area. Unbelievably, they still wanted to be friends with the tribe and tell them about Jesus. Two years later, some of the women from the tribe came out to where Elizabeth was living and they invited Elizabeth and Rachel, the sister of Nate the pilot, to go out and visit the tribe. So, off they went. Elizabeth went to the tribe and she met the people who had killed her husband. And they did not spear her, but they welcomed her instead. You see, normally, when the tribe met outsiders, like gung-ho explorers or greedy businessmen looking for oil, it would always end in a fight. Even within the tribe, there was a lot of fighting and killing. They didn't understand why Elizabeth's husband, Jim, and the other men hadn't fought back. Why were these outsiders so friendly and peaceful? And why did Elizabeth still want to talk to them even after they'd killed her husband? What made them different? Of course, we know that they were different because they knew Jesus. They could forgive and be peaceful because Jesus forgives us and we can live in peace. In fact, that was what Elizabeth told the tribe as she shared the gospel with this once dangerous people. 
Over time, many of the tribe became Christians. And Elizabeth went on to write many incredible books, most of which I have read because I love her. <laughs> and she did so much more until her death just a few years ago in 2015. Elizabeth Elliot showed incredible forgiveness by going to live with the tribe who'd killed her husband. She cared for them, taught them and loved them, even though they had caused her so much pain. If Elizabeth Elliot can forgive the people who killed her husband, then how much more should we be able to forgive the people in our lives? As the missionaries originally went out on a plane, I'm going to hand over to Rob, who's going to teach you how to make a paper plane. Craft time! Alright, as you guys love the origami craft from a few weeks back, I am back with another paper-oriented craft. Paper planes! Okay, now odds are most of you have probably made a paper plane before. If you haven't, they're gonna blow your mind. So simple, but so amazing. Genius. So, here we go. You start out by folding your piece of paper in half. Then, fold the top corners into the middle. Then, you fold those diagonal corners again into the middle. Then you fold right along in straight lines to give it some wings. Done. And there's your basic paper plane. And that's the easy paper plane. Everyone knows it nice and simple. Although, would you like to know another design? A secret one. In fact, this is the design for the paper aeroplane that won the world record for distance. And I know it. So, if you're happy with the basic one, great, just do that. But if you want to have a go at the pro one, I'll do it quickly. So just rewind the video, pause it, figure it out yourself, and make a pro plane. And now you have some awesome paper planes. Hiya! Yeah. For today's prayers, we're going to pray for missionaries around the world. But we're also going to write a short prayer for ourselves on our paper aeroplanes. So think about what you would like to pray. Maybe for courage for God to use you to tell people about Jesus. And as we finish praying for the missionaries, we'll also launch our own prayers into the sky. Dear Lord, thank you for Elizabeth Elliot and the missionaries in Ecuador. I pray now for the missionaries around the world that you bless them and protect them and use them to tell people about Jesus. And I pray that you will hear my written down prayer as well. In Jesus' name, Amen. And so, a final thought. There are lots of different heroes of the faith. Elizabeth Elliot is my favourite. These real life heroes of the faith can be a great inspiration for how we can live our lives for Jesus today. Last week we made a Ten Commandments game. So let's have a look at how you got on. The Ten Commandments, presented to you by the Virtual Sunday Schoolers. And look at these Ten Commandments games on the stone tablets. They're looking awesome. Great work guys, loving the colours, loving the creativity, you did that one in your bible, this one's even been done on Minecraft, and you've been keeping your grown ups on their toes, testing them out on their knowledge of the Ten Commandments, because grown ups need to know these things as well. Keep up the good work, yes virtual Sunday schoolers. Now Rob's been teaching you all about paper planes this week, so don't forget to take a photo and send it in. Or even better, why not send in a video of your planes in flight? It's 
ourselves in the plane. <laughs> Ask your grown-ups to head over to our Virtual Sunday School UK Facebook page or Instagram account to get in touch. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. See you next week. Why not tune in to Virtual Sunday School? So grab your drink. <gasps> that was close. Sorry. <laughs>